everything. We model when we use language. When the first computer users got tired of pushing those buttons on the front of the computer, they developed assembly. Assembly language models what's happening on the computer. And as time went on, other languages were developed, but they're all modeling what's on the computer. So there was evolution within the world of the computer language, but the rest of the system wasn't really changing much. In, uh, in the beginning of development, we go talk to the customer. And the customer may want something, that may think they want something, and they describe it, and what, what they get doesn't really look all that much like it. Uh, and there tends to be drift pretty much all the time. So a few years back, case tools came into being. I believe the case tools are an evolutionary dead end. Uh, UML tries to be, some, be uh, a one-size-fits-all solution, and it ends up being a one-size-fits-very-few. The, sorry, um, so the solution, there are, our answer to that, model-driven design. It's a new approach, and it takes the, the beginning of the process to the customer. So we sit down with the customer and we talk about what is it that you want to do in the customer's language. And we get a list of the verbs and the nouns. We get the actual jargon of the customer. We then refine it. We make sure that we don't have two words meaning the same thing. We make sure we don't have one word meaning two different things. And once it's been refined, we have a domain-specific language that is sentences, nouns and verbs, with a little bit of framework, it's going to look something like pseudocode. The customer can write that. The customer can look at what we've written in it and tell us whether it's right or not. And if they say, something's missing that we don't have a word for, well, that's a word that needs to go back into the language. So it may seem like magic, but we can go from that domain-specific language to machine code. There's some work that has to be done before you get there to build a framework, and that framework uh, is built on top of what has already been done by others. There are some very good tools out there. Um, the first thing we do is take the domain-specific language and perform a transformation on it to generate a visual uh, representation of the process. It looks kind of like UML. Uh, it is both simpler than UML and more sophisticated. It has more things it can do, and you can define things however you want to. You can drill down so you can have layers of uh, complexity. And once you get it to where it does everything you need it to do, you run it through a code generator, and the code generator spits out machine, uh, machine code. Well, not machine code. It spits out whatever language you're generating. Probably don't want to generate directly into machine code. Um, but you can have it do C sharp, you could have it do Python, whatever you want to, with not a whole lot of extra work. Now, there is some work that goes into making this happen, because you're going to make your framework specific to your domain. The uh, things that already exist do a lot of it, but the it, it'll need to be tweaked to do specific things for your domain. But once you've done that, once you've got that framework, you can write code that'll do a lot of different things. As long as it's using that same language and you've debugged the, the process for those words, it will work without any further interruption. Um, and customers think it's magic. There are a couple of very good resources. Um, what Metacase is probably, it's, this is this uh, product that we use. It has a very good framework base. Thank you.